The first thing that strikes you about the Vinales Valley is the lush landscape of the farmland surrounded by the stark limestone hills or magotes. But the Vinales Valley is more than just a stunning landscape in Western Cuba. It's a place where time has seemingly paused, allowing the traditions of its people to endure. As you step into this valley, you're not just entering a region renowned for its tobacco production. You're stepping into the lives of those who have cultivated this land for generations. Each face here tells a story of resilience, pride, and an unbreakable bond with the soil beneath their feet. Through the portraits in this short video, you'll get a glimpse of the soul of Vinales, a place where every face, every smile, and every gaze holds a Cuba's rich heritage waiting to be told. Hi, I'm Duncan. I'm a traveler and explorer, and whether I'm in Cuba, Mexico, or Europe, I love to tell the stories about my experiences. This episode is about a very special place and its special people. I've entitled it, The Faces of Vinales, the soul behind Cuba's tobacco tradition. In addition to the video that I've captured, quite a number of environmental portraits of its people that I feel really capture the essence of who these people are and the special bond that they have with this special place, the Vinales Valley. Let's go to Vinales. Nestled in the western part of Cuba, the Vinales Valley in Pinar del Rio province is a region steeped in history and renowned for its tobacco production. It's a place where every face tells a story. As you wander through this picturesque, almost prehistoric looking valley, surrounded by dramatic limestone hills known as magotes, it's easy to feel like time has paused here preserving the traditional ways of life that have defined its culture for centuries. But beyond the sweeping landscapes and the rich red soil lies the real heart of Vinales, its people. The name Vinales Valley comes from the Spanish word vina, which means vineyard. The area was named by the early Spanish settlers who found the valley to be fertile and suitable for growing crops, including grapes, even though the tobacco later became the dominant crop. The valley's name reflects its agricultural heritage with its lush landscapes and favorable climate, making it an ideal location for cultivation. Over time, the focus shifted to tobacco, but the name Vinales remained as a nod to its early agricultural potential. When I first set foot in this valley, it was the faces that drew me in. Some weathered, limed, some youthful with hopes for the future. Each portrait I've taken here holds an emotional weight that words often struggle to convey. The eyes of a farmer whose hands have known the soil for decades reflect a life deeply connected with the land. The subtle smile of a tobacco worker hints at the quiet pride they take in their craft. These are not just pictures, they're windows into the lives shaped by tradition, hardship, and an unwavering bond with the land. The history of tobacco cultivation in Vinales and Pinar del Rio dates back to the early Spanish colonial period. When Spanish explorers arrived in Cuba in the 16th century, they found the indigenous Taino Indians cultivating and using tobacco for religious and medicinal purposes. Recognizing the value of this new crop, the Spanish quickly integrated tobacco farming into their agricultural practices and by the 17th century, Cuban tobacco had become a highly sought after in European markets. Yet, it's the people, not just the crop, that make this history come alive. It's here that I met Luis, part of a long family line of tobacco farmers. As he passionately explained the planning and harvesting process, I felt reassured that the ancient traditions were alive and well, passed generation to generation in a complex relationship with the Cuban government 
that also relies heavily on tourism to supplement the farm income and welcomes strangers into their houses and their lives. Passion and intensity that they have for their craft comes through strong. In the portraits I've captured, you can almost feel the weight of this history. The resilience of a community that has weathered centuries of change, all while preserving the soul of their craft. The fertile red soil and favorable climate of the Vinales Valley proved ideal for growing high quality tobacco. Over the centuries, the region developed a reputation for producing some of the finest tobacco leaves in the world, particularly the coveted wrapper leaves used in the production of premium cigars. This reputation was solidified in the 19th century when Cuban cigars became synonymous with luxury and craftsmanship. But it's not just about the tobacco. It's about the hands that have worked these fields for generations. Even today, much of the work is done by hand, from planting and cultivating the tobacco plants to harvesting and curing the leaves. The tobacco is often grown on small, family-owned farms known as vegas, where techniques and knowledge are shared within families, maintaining the artisanal nature of the industry. When I look into the faces of these farmers, I see more than just tradition. I see a fierce pride, a connection to the past, and a determination to carry that legacy forward. One of the most distinctive features of the Vinales Valley is the Casas de Tabaco, wooden curing barns where harvested tobacco leaves are hung to dry and ferment. This process is critical to developing the rich flavors and aromas that characterize Cuban tobacco. The sight of these barns, set against the backdrop of the magotes and the lush green fields, is iconic and deeply evocative of the region's heritage. But it's the stories within these barns that linger. Stories of long hours, of generations working side by side, of a way of life that refuses to fade. In recent years, tourism has brought new opportunities and challenges to the region. While the influx of visitors provides economic benefits, it also raises questions about preserving the traditional ways of life that make Vinales so special. Balancing modernization with cultural preservation is an ongoing effort for the people of Pinar del Rio. This tension is something I've tried to capture in my portraits. Faces that are simultaneously welcoming of change and fiercely protective of their heritage. In Cuba, tobacco farmers are required to sell a significant portion of their crop to the government, which holds a monopoly over the tobacco industry through a state-run company called Tabacuba. Generally, Cuban tobacco farmers are required to sell about 90% of their tobacco harvest to the government at fixed prices. This percentage can vary slightly depending on specific agreements and the quality of the tobacco produced. The remaining 10% of their crop is allowed to be retained by the farmers, who can use it for personal consumption, local sales, or private production of cigars. This system ensures that the government maintains control over the industry of the high-quality tobacco used for the production of Cuba's famous cigars, while also providing a regulated market structure for the farmers. In summary, the Vinales Valley in Pinar del Rio is not just a place of breathtaking natural beauty. It is a living testament to Cuba's rich agricultural heritage. But more than that, it's a place where the land and the people are inextricably linked. The history of tobacco growing here is a story of tradition, craftsmanship, and resilience. It's a story etched into the faces and souls of those that call this valley home. Faces that remind us that while time may seem to stand still here, the human spirit lives on forever. I really enjoyed the visit to the Vinales Valley and especially to meet the people that call this place home. This is the type of authentic experience that I'm really looking for in my travels. I also hope you've had a chance to take a look at my previous episode about Ernest Hemingway's Secret Havana. It's about all the places that Ernest Hemingway used to frequent, downtown Havana, but also his estate, Villa Finca. I also took a very special visit out to the small seaside town of Cojimar, 
which was the setting for his Nobel Prize winning work, The Old Man in the Sea. It's there that I met a small boy that was fishing on the bay that I had a chance to photograph that really reminded me of Manolin, the boy that was in The Old Man in the Sea. So please go back, take a look at that. I think you'll enjoy it. In my next episode, I'll take you along with me as I visit a workshop from a master Cuban craftsman by the name of Alexi. He opened up his workshop and I had a chance to really see a master at work. It was lots of fun and I think you'll like it. So stay tuned so you won't miss any of the episodes. If you would be interested to purchase any of the prints that you've seen on this video today, you can do so by visiting my website at www.adventureswithduncan.com and you can take a look at this gallery for Vinales and other galleries that I have listed there. And you can order with confidence since my website is powered by a company called Printique which is a subsidiary of Adorama, which is a well-known photography website. So, hope you enjoy that. Please take a look at my gallery. I think you'll find some prints there that you'll really like. So that's all for now. Please like and subscribe. I'd love to hear any comments that you might have about this video.